Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about Chapter 6, Section 2 of the CDL Manual for the State of California. This section of the manual deals with air brakes on trailers, particularly semi-trailers. Most of the components on a semi-trailer are the same as they are on the truck. There's air tanks, there's lines, brake chambers, push rods, slack adjusters, S cams, brake shoes, linings, and drums. All of those components are the same on the trailer as they are on the truck. There are a few different valves. We'll go over those valves in the explanation and clarification as we go through the, the section, chapter six, section two. We'll give you more information and more clarification. We'll be right back with that information. Smart Drivers, welcome back. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about Chapter 6, Section 2 of the CDL Manual for the State of California. This section deals with trailers that have air brakes and trucks that are designed to pull trailers with air brakes. This is for CDL drivers who are going to be truck drivers. As I said in the introduction, all of the components on a semi-trailer with air brakes are essentially the same. There's a few differences. The truck that is designed to pull a trailer with air brakes will have a tractor protection valve and have a tractor protection system. Engineers called those two things the same thing just to confuse you. Tractor protection system, tractor protection valve. And just to confuse you even farther, <laughs> the tractor protection valve is part of the tractor protection system which consists of the tractor protection valve and the trailer supply valve. Those two valves make up the tractor protection system. Now, the CDL manual in California is a little bit right, but not quite right in terms of what it talks about in terms of the tractor protection system and the trailer air supply valve. The trailer air supply valve is the eight-sided red button on the dash in the truck. And you can see the image here of the trailer air supply valve. The reason the engineers called it the trailer air supply valve, oddly enough, it supplies air to the trailer. Thus, they called it the trailer air supply valve. The trailer air supply valve, to try and make it simple, is nothing more than a switch, on, off. It turns air on and off to the trailer. And I'll give you some more explanation about the trailer air supply valve later on in the video. So, all trucks designed to pull trailers with air brakes have a tractor protection system, and the tractor protection system is to protect the tractor's air supply in the event that there's a catastrophic air loss in the trailer, thus the tractor protection system. It protects the tractor's air supply. The trailer hand valve, located up underneath the steering wheel, maybe on the dash, depending on which truck you're driving. Question on the test, get this right out of the way. Not to be used for parking. That is the question on the CDL license test. Not to be used for parking, do not use it for parking. The trailer hand valve applies the trailer service brakes independently of the truck. So you're going down the road, you can pull the hand valve down and apply the trailer brakes independently of the truck. Now, in the old days, they were called broker brakes. In the manual, they call them a Johnson bar or a trolley brake. They're called all kinds of things. But in this day and age, they're becoming redundant and there's actually some tractors that are now not having a trailer hand valve on them. The only thing that we really use hand valves for was hooking up to trailers that didn't have spring brakes pre-1975. Essentially, we don't use them anymore. You just put your foot on the brake pedal and it applies all the brakes on the unit evenly. So the question on the test, not to be used for parking and certainly don't use it going up and down the road because it's not like a conventional brake. It's kind of, that you can't really tell how much you're putting it on. So unfortunately, if you're going down the brake and you start using the trailer brake, you're gonna lock up the trailer brakes and that trailer is going to start coming around and you could risk a jackknife, so don't use it. Question on the test, not to be used for parking. The tractor protection valve and the trailer air supply valve are the two valves that make up the tractor protection system. The tractor protection system protects the tractor's air supply in the event of a catastrophic air loss in the trailer. So for example, the trailer drops off the back of the truck and rips the air lines off. The tractor protection valve is the guard. It detects the air loss in the trailer and tells the trailer air supply to shut off air to the trailer. Thus, it's called the trailer air supply. Some of the valves in the system, the engineers actually got right. Trailer air supply. It's essentially a switch on and off. It supplies air to the trailer or it turns air off to the trailer. Think of the trailer air supply a little bit like an electric light switch. The electric light switch doesn't turn the light off and on. It actually controls electricity and subsequently the light goes off and on. Same thing with the trailer air supply. It controls air to the trailer 
turns it off and on and subsequently the parking brakes go on and off on the trailer. So the trailer air supply and the tractor protection valve are the two valves that make up the tractor protection system. The system protects the tractor's air supply in the event of the trailer losing air. So the tractor protection valve is the valve that the two lines, the glad hand lines are plumbed into on the back of the truck and you can of often see the lines plumbed right into that valve. The trailer air supply valve is an eight sided, an octagon valve, octagon shaped valve. It's red and it has trailer air supply written on it if the truck isn't too old and it isn't worn off and you push it in to supply air to the trailer and pull it out to evacuate air from the spring brake chambers in the trailer and put the parking brakes on in the trailer. The tractor protection system is part of your pre-trip inspection. When you fan down in the cab to between 20 and 45 to test the spring brake supply automatically on the truck, the spring brakes on the trailer will also automatically apply. So the four-sided yellow button, the parking brake valve will pop out and the trailer air supply button will pop out and the spring brakes will apply on the trailer. Most trailers in this day and age will all have spring brakes. You, if you're hauling specialty equipment on low boys and those types of things, maybe they won't have spring brakes or something pre-1975. But I've been around the industry for, since the early 1990s, more than 20 years now. I've never encountered a trailer that doesn't have spring brakes on it. So it's very unlikely in this day and age that you're gonna encounter a trailer that doesn't have spring brakes on it. But in the event that you do, you gotta hook the lines up before you back under it, push in the trailer air supply, pull down the hand valve, and then back under the trailer so it doesn't run away on you. As well, when you park them and unhook, you gotta block the wheels. When you hook up to the trailer, there's commonly called the lines, which are the two air lines and the electrical line. We're not gonna talk about the electrical connection, but we'll just talk about the air lines. The air lines are the only air lines on the air brake system that are color-coded. There's a blue line and a red line. The blue line is called the control line or the service line. And the way that I remember it is, is that the blue line controls the service brakes. So it can be called either the control line or the service brakes. The red line is the emergency or supply line. And the reason it's called the supply line is because it fills the air tank in the trailer and fills the air brake chambers releasing the spring brakes and thus the parking brakes keeping them off while you're going up and down the road. In the event of an emergency that the emergency line becomes detached or one of the lines rips or ruptures in the trailer, it is also the emergency line because the tractor protection system will detect catastrophic air loss in the trailer and tell the trailer air supply to shut off air to the trailer. Therefore, it's called the emergency line because the emergency brakes on the trailer will apply. When you hook the lines up, the red line, the emergency supply line always goes on the driver's side. If you hook them up backwards, the spring brakes won't release. So if you get in the truck and try to pull away and the trailer brakes won't release, get out and make sure that you got the um, glad hands hooked up correctly. The red line on the driver's side, it's always on the outside. As well, in this day and age, <laughs> because you know, we're not always awake and sometimes we're tired. The glad hands are now polarized so you can't actually hook them up backwards. You can only hook them up one way. Airlines, red and blue. The blue goes in the inside, the red goes on the driver's side. The blue line is called either the control line or the service line and it controls the service brakes going up and down the road when you push down on the brake pedal or pull down on the hand valve. The red line is the supply line which supplies air to the air tank and puts air into the spring brake chambers keeping the parking brakes slash emergency brakes off while you're going up and down the road. In the event that there's a catastrophic air loss in the trailer, the tractor protection valve will detect air loss and tell the trailer air supply valve to shut off air to the trailer and in that event the emergency brakes on the trailer will apply. The hose couplers on the end of the air lines are called the glad hands and as I said previously the reason they're called glad hands is because they're happy to be hooked up. Now to hook them up simply meet the two rubber seals together like this at a 90 degree angle and push it down and the two will lock into place. One of the questions on the license test is what is the most common cause of air loss in trailers? And the answer is defective glad hand seals. There's little rubber seals in there and if you can wield a flat ended screwdriver or a butter knife, you can pry that seal out of there and replace it. You can pick them up at a truck stop for a couple of bucks. And I'll tell you, the other thing about driving truck, I've been around trucks and buses for more or less 20 years. I've never replaced a glad hand seal. They're robust. 
<laughs> we got to love technology and materials and those types of things. They're just a lot more durable and it's not likely you're going to have to replace a glad hand seal. But for the purposes of the license test, that's the answer to the test. Glad hand seals become defective and have to be replaced. One of the warnings they have here in the manual is that if you cross the lines on an older trailer that doesn't have spring brakes on it, you can potentially drive away, but you're not going to have any brakes on the trailer. Now, let me tell you from a bit of experience, you don't need to have very much experience. A couple of months in the seat and you're going to know that there aren't any trailer brakes back there in that trailer. Because trailers, if they're loaded, can weigh anywhere from five to eight times what the tractor weighs. And when they're loaded and you don't have any trailer brakes back there, you know that trailer's pushing you. So get out, put the lines back on correctly. The red goes on the driver's side and the blue always goes on the inside. That's the way you hook up the lines correctly. As well, when you unhook the trailer, you need to stow the lines. Most trucks that are capable of pulling trailers equipped with air brakes will have dummy couplers. They're couplers that you just put them in and keeps dirt and water and other contaminants out of the airline. So use the dummy couplers. A lot of guys will just use a bungee strap on the deck, on the back of the truck. Uh, if you got dummy couplers, put them in the dummy couplers. It just, it keeps the air brake system clean. All trailers and dolly converters will have air tanks to store air for the application of the service brakes and to keep the spring brakes off at the trailer axles. And one of the ways that we do this is that in the back of the trailer, without trying to get too technical, there's a relay valve. And the reason we call the blue line the control line is because it sends a, a signal to the relay valve and tells it to make a brake application of whatever pressure you made on the foot pedal or the hand valve. So say for example you made a 10 pound brake application, the blue line sends a signal of 10 pounds back to the relay valve, the relay valve pulls 10 pounds of pressure directly from the air tanks and sends it out to the brake chambers, thus reducing brake lag in the system. Another way you can think of the relay valves in the system is kind of like if I wanted to send flowers to my mom in Ontario 2,000 miles away, well, I wouldn't drive there and go and buy flowers at the local flower shop and take them to my mom because that's really slow because it takes three days to drive to Ontario and then three days to come back. Rather, what I would do is I'd pick up the phone, call the local flower shop and tell them to send flowers out to my mom. That way I could do it in a matter of a couple of minutes. It's the same thing as the relay valve on a trailer 60 feet away from the driver. It sends a signal back to the relay valve. The relay valve goes, okay, you want 10 pounds of pressure to the service brake chambers and simply pulls air from the air tanks and sends it directly to the brake chambers four feet away, thus reducing brake lag in the system. In the manual it says that the emergency line, the supply line, fills up the air tanks at the trailer or the dolly converter and yes that's what it does thus it's called the supply line as well it also provides air into the spring brake chambers to cage the springs and hold off the parking brakes while you're going up and down the road again the trailer is the same as the truck if you have an air loss in the trailer eventually what happens is there isn't enough air pressure to hold those springs off and eventually those springs will come on and act as emergency brakes in the event of a catastrophic air loss in the trailer Again, the air tanks on the traders have drain valves and have to be drained daily, 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 daily. That's the answer to the question on the test. Drain the air tanks daily. If you are pulling multiple trailers or the trailer that you are hooked to the back of the tractor has the capability of hooking another trailer onto the back of it, often via a dolly converter, there will be shutoff valves on the back of the trailer for you to allow to hook up air lines to another trailer and supply air to that so you have trailer brakes on the second or third trailer. Shutoff valves simply control the air supply for multiple trailers. Trailer service, parking, and emergency brakes. All trailers in this day and age are going to have spring brakes on them used for parking and spring brakes the same as on the trucks. And I'll put a link up here for you for the service brakes, the parking brakes, and the emergency brakes on trucks. They work exactly the same as they do on trailers. Pre-1975 dolly converters and trailers will not have spring brakes. However, in the event of a catastrophic air loss, the emergency brakes have to apply, which is essentially as long as there's air in the air tank, the brakes will apply and will stay applied as long as there's air in the air tank. However, that's probably not going to happen, but pre-1975, and you need to know that for the purposes of a road test, 
that even though they don't have spring brakes, they do have emergency brakes. And this is where the term dynamite comes from, which still lingers around in the trucking industry. And when air pressure drops in the system and the two buttons on the dash pop out applying the spring brakes, many drivers still say, oh, the brakes dynamited. No, the brakes didn't dynamite. They just, the parking brakes applied. The emergency brakes came on because there wasn't enough air in the system to hold the springs off anymore. And the emergency brakes applied. But if you hear the term dynamite, that's what it means is that these vehicles that don't have spring brakes, if there's a catastrophic air loss in the emergency line, it will cause the brakes to apply and they will stay applied as long as there's air in the air tanks. ABS brakes on trailers. I'll put a link up here to the first video where I go over extensively ABS on trucks and trailers. Check down in the description box and you'll find the exact uh, chapter mark for the section on ABS in that video. Quickly review, if there is ABS on the trailer, there'll be a light on the driver's side near the rear of the trailer that will tell you that there's ABS on the trailer. If you're not sure, climb underneath the trailer and have a quick look for the airline out to the brake chamber. There will be an electrical line running along the airline. It'll be zippy tied to it. That will tell you that there's ABS on the trailer. Now, one of the things that they caution you about is if you have a combination vehicle truck and trailer and either the trailer or the truck doesn't have air brakes and the other piece does potentially it could cause you to lose control so what you have to keep in mind is that when you're hard braking in an emergency situation abs dictates that you push down on the brake pedal and hold it pushback shutter noise all of those things are common for abs brakes abs brakes do not stop you in a shorter distance rather they're designed for you to keep steering control and the wheels don't lock up as you're going down the road. If you have a combination vehicle where one piece of the unit has ABS and the other doesn't, you could potentially cause a lockup and a jackknife because one is locked up solid and the other is working kind of normally. So you gotta keep that in mind while you're going up and down the road with a combination vehicle where one piece does have ABS and the other doesn't. That's the caution that they're putting in place in terms of the manual. As well, the CDL manual, uh, by the time you get done reading it and studying it for the purposes of your license, you should know all about uh, ABS brakes because I noticed that they go over ABS brakes no less than four times in the manual. Section 6.2, review questions. What I suggest to you is turn the video off, go through the questions, answer them yourself, go through the manual if you have to, but answer the questions and then come back, turn the video back on, and we'll go through the review questions together. Why should you not use the trailer hand valve while driving? The reason you shouldn't do it is because potentially you could lock up the trailer wheels and cause the trailer to jackknife. That is the reason you don't use the trailer hand valve while you're driving. Use the foot valve and it'll apply all of the brakes on the, the vehicle equally and therefore you'll have nice even braking and you won't risk jackknifing the trailer. As well, many of these hand valves are not spring loaded and you can't sort of get a sense of how much pressure you're putting to the trailer until you look in the mirror and see it starting to come around. So don't use it because you could risk a jackknife. Describe what the trailer air supply control does. I pretty sure they're talking about the trailer air supply valve on the dash. It's the eight sided red button on the dash, the trailer air supply valve. The trailer air supply shuts air on and off to the trailer. Thus, the trailer air supply valve. You push it in, you put air to the trailer, fills up the reservoir, and it also puts air into the spring brake chambers, releasing the spring brakes, the parking brakes on the trailer. As long as you have sufficient air supply in the trailer, the parking brakes will remain off and not act as emergency brakes. As well, the trailer air supply, think of it like a light switch. It doesn't control the trailer parking brakes. It actually controls air supply to the trailer, just like a light switch controls electricity. The subsequent action, like the electric light switch, turns the light off and on. The trailer air supply also turns the parking brakes on and off on the trailer. Describe what the service line is for. The service line is the blue line and can be called either the service line or the control line. The service line controls the service brakes on the trailer while you're going up and down the road. Whether you make a hand valve application or you make a foot valve application, it will apply the service brakes on the trailer. And the way to remember that is the blue line controls the service brakes on the trailer. What is the emergency line for? The emergency line is red and can be either called the emergency line or the supply line. When everything is working normally, the red line to the trailer 
supplies air to the air tank and air into the spring brake chamber and keeps the spring brakes off while you're going up and down the road. In the event of a catastrophic air loss in the trailer equipped with air brakes, the tractor protection valve will detect air loss in the trailer and tell the trailer air supply valve on the dash to shut off air to the trailer. When air is shut off to the trailer, the spring brakes apply automatically, applying the emergency brakes and you are going to come to a screeching halt on the roadway. Why should you use wheel chocks on a trailer that doesn't have spring brakes? Because once the air bleeds off in the air tank, there's no brakes on the trailer and it could potentially roll away. And in the old days, a lot of trailers got pushed off train cars, pushed over hills, and unfortunately a few porta potties got killed in the process. So, you know, post-1975 we determined that we needed to have some way of securing the vehicle indefinitely well parked, so we put spring brakes on them. If the trailer doesn't have spring brakes, as you'll be able to detect by looking underneath the undercarriage and seeing the brake chambers, you'll note that they're a lot smaller because it's only a service brake chamber. Therefore, you need to block the wheels before you unhook and leave it unattended for any period of time. What are shutoff valves? Shutoff valves allow you to pull multiple trailers and on the back of the trailer, there'll be shutoff taps on and off that if you hook on a second trailer you can put air lines to it open the taps and put air out to that trailer so that you'll have braking capability on that trailer service brakes parking brakes and emergency brakes in conclusion trailers equipped with air brakes will have all of the same components as trucks equipped with air brakes they have air tanks lines brake chambers push rods slack adjusters s cams brake pads linings and drums they're all the same components Slight differences, any truck that is capable of pulling trailers fitted with air brakes will have a tractor protection system on it. The tractor protection system consists of the tractor protection valve and the trailer air supply. The tractor protection valve detects air loss in the trailer in the event of catastrophic air loss in the air brake equipped trailer. It will tell the trailer air supply to shut off air to the trailer. Subsequently, when air is shut off to the trailer, the spring brakes will apply acting as emergency brakes and you will come to a screeching halt. There's two lines to hook up to the trailer to supply it with air. Those two lines are the control line and the emergency line. One is blue, one is red. The red always goes on the driver's side. The couplers to hook up the lines to the trailer are called glad hands. Question on the test is, what is the most common cause of air loss in a trailer? It's defective glad hand seals as well. Hand valve will apply the service brakes on the trailer independently of the truck. The hand valve is not to be used for parking and not to be used while you're going up and down the road because you could lock up the trailer brakes and potentially risk a jackknifing. Finally, if you're pulling a trailer that doesn't have spring brakes on it and you unhook it, you need to chalk the tires so that it doesn't roll away and potentially cause property damage or risk life and limb of other people in and around the area. So block the wheels of a trailer that you're pulling that doesn't have spring brakes. And in this day and age, it's really unlikely that you're gonna pull any trailer that doesn't have spring brakes. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you see here, share, subscribe, leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that helps us out. As well, if you're embarking on a road test for a CDL license, check out the videos below. Lots of great information there for you to be successful on your road test. And as well, if you're working towards a career as a bus or truck driver, check out the videos on the channel. Lots of great information for you to get started in your new career. If you're on a mobile device, check out the cards in the upper right hand corner. Those will give you links to the videos for the information that you need to be successful on your road test and as a career as a bus or truck driver. Question for my smart drivers. Have you ever pulled a trailer that didn't have spring brakes on it? Was it an older trailer? Or was it a newer trailer, like a low boy or some kind of trailer that didn't have spring brakes because it had low clearance on it and you couldn't get spring brakes underneath it? Leave a comment down in the comment section. All of that information helps us out and helps out the new drivers who are working towards their CDL license and a career as a truck or bus driver. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Rick with Smart Drive Test. Good luck on your road test. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now.